No matter how much you've been revising in the last few weeks or months, or what your grade aims are, the last two to three weeks before GCSEs are incredibly important to whatever grade you'll get. Today I'm going to be explaining what I did in year 11 to revise in the last two to three weeks and how you can do the same and I'm going to be providing my best tips to help during that time. I'm going to start by answering a question that I think is really important that quite a few people have started to ask now and I want to clarify and make clear my opinions and thoughts on this. So the question is, how much should I prioritise the paper, the upcoming papers? Should I delay paper two uh, revision until the half term in the middle of GCSEs? My answer to this is no. Do not delay your revision for paper two until half term. What I would do is prioritise paper one, prioritise the exams that are coming up first, but don't neglect the papers that are later on. This is really, really important, okay? So I would say if you want to sort of percentage, maybe 65%, 35% target your vision towards the upcoming exams. But it's so important that you don't neglect the exams that are later on and leave it to half term. This just means that you're strong, you're in a stronger position because for these exams that are later on, you've still got like a month to prepare technically. So what this means is that you can really, really um, over a month, you've got a month from when the exams start to prepare. But what this means is that you can really improve your grades in these subjects. So do not neglect them. But bear in mind that you should be prioritising the upcoming exams. I'm going to talk about that in a bit more detail in, uh, in this video. But that's my answer to that is don't neglect those papers. That's very important. OK, so here are some things that I did that really helped me in the, right at the end of GCSEs or GC, until GCSEs began. OK. Number one is spam questions. So what I basically did was my teacher in science printed out loads and loads of practice questions for me. Like I think it was just all of the ones from past papers or something like that, just loads for each of the sciences. And in about the week before the exam, day before the exams, I would go through all of these. So I'd do loads of questions all at once and mark them all and see what I got. And this was really, really helpful for me because it like it brought everything together into one final kind of like exam question push so i'd really recommend spamming especially for science and maths you can't get enough just of doing questions loads and loads of questions corbett maths five a day i've talked about everyone should be doing corbett maths five a day now wake up if you can maybe wake up 10 minutes earlier something like that or if you have time to do it and just do corbett maths five a day once a day this really keeps your mind fresh like with maths and it means that you cover so many different type of questions that instead of like picking um topics that you're bad at which obviously you should still be doing it's really good to make sure you're fresh on every topic and that's what Corbin Maths Five a Day does and then you can pick your grade aims I'll put the link to that in the description so I'd be doing Corbin Maths Five a Day every day from now until all your maths papers and I'd be doing lots and lots of science questions this really really helped me right at the end just to like do loads of questions so ask your teachers if they have like big um, they should do it. Mine from Exam Pro, which teachers have access to, I think. So ask them if they have that. If not, you can use websites like Physics and Math Tutor, stuff like that. Secondly, on science as well, I started at this point watching free science lessons. What I did in the last two weeks, I think, um, before each exam, was I watched all of the um, free science lesson videos for the sciences. I'd recommend this a lot because once again, it just brings together your knowledge. You'll remember some of the stuff again, and it's really, really helpful. So if you like, if you prefer cognito, something like that would work. But I would actually recommend watching videos and just making sure you've got that big recap. And it's a bit quicker. You could put on maybe 1.5 speed, something like that, than doing all of the Senecas, which I still recommend you're doing, especially for your weaker topics. But videos like this are really helpful just to try and summarize and get all your knowledge together and then obviously practice questions too. Okay. Next thing is flashcards. Flashcards are really important at this stage. Um, what I would do in terms of, I, I said I'd talk about it later on in the video and here it is now. In terms of the upcoming exams, in about the week before each exam, I would go through all the flashcards for, that I had for that paper every day of that week. That's what I'm going to be doing for A-levels this year. So say I have an exam on Wednesday. From Saturday, I'm going to do all the flashcards I have for that exam. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, all of them. This means that what you can do is really kind of prioritise and make sure you've got all of your revision and stuff for that and you're recapping everything that's in it with your flashcards. Um, what I would also do as well is flashcards that didn't stick, that I kept getting wrong, I would take them out and put them to the side and I'd make sure I was going through these. And then on the morning of the exam, I'm going to do more videos on like what I did in the exact day, but here's one piece of advice. On the morning of the exam, I'd have like five or ten flashcards that of things that I really found difficult to remember and I'd just make sure I was going over them again. 
So flashcards are important now. You should probably be doing maybe one hour of flashcards, depending on how many you've made a night. I've done a video on flashcards for the technique if you want to know how to do that. Um, but I'd recommend going through them daily and any ones you get right, moving into a different pile or something and going through them a bit less frequently. This means that you can get through a lot of them quite quickly. So make sure you're doing flashcards as well. And just that kind of combines everything once again. It's all about bringing together your knowledge now, making sure you've got all the knowledge, you're not leaving anything uncovered and then um, combining that with practice questions. OK, the last thing that I have, the last piece of advice I have today is actually advice I haven't talked about and I've never seen talked about on any YouTube channel before, really. It is a I'm going to be doing a separate video on this because I think it's really important, but it's something called examiner's reports. I don't know how many of you will have heard of that, but I hadn't when I was in year 11, really, until near the end. What this basically is, is the exam board after each set of exams, so say like an English language at Excel, they compile like a big list of, of um, answers that students did and they like comment on it and they say like, this is good, this is high marks, this is low marks. I don't know which exam boards do this properly, but I know Ed Excel did. Um, so what I would do, and I'm going to put the link in the description for this soon, and make sure you're subscribed, because what I'm going to do as well is do a much more detailed video on this, because it's really effective technique, is I would just read these. So it would be like English language, paper one, 2020, and then there'd be like a long document of loads of people's example questions and comments on them. And this really helped to write at the end just to get my exam technique in and see like what I needed to do to get high marks. I'd usually skip the low mark ones. And then there's loads, you've often asked me for like high mark questions and stuff. There's loads of examples of what high mark questions involves in those in those um, exam reports. So keep an eye on that because I'm going to be doing a video on that. But I'll put the link in the description for a couple too and see if you can find your exam reports. Right, so that's the conclusion for today. Just, just to keep all of this in mind, it should serve as a good reminder to you guys of what you should be doing and how you should kind of be focusing your vision. Keep in mind that what I think you should be doing is just bringing together your vision now. So bring everything together, you know, watch videos of summarizing, do loads of practice questions across all of it. Um, don't neglect paper two, but prioritize paper one, especially when you're like five days from the exam, you should be doing like flashcards every day of that exam, in every day before it. Um, for the for at least five days before maybe like videos every day before it and this this will kind of keep going throughout the whole exam so maybe i'd be doing computer science in the four days before and stuff like that so make sure you're doing that the whole time and then like i said lots of practice questions so i hope that helps please leave any comments um down below and make sure to leave a like i'm going to be doing lots of um lots of upcoming videos, lots of pieces of advice, and I do try and take a lot of suggestions. So leave any of them in the comments and I will reply and hopefully do a video on that. I hope that was helpful and thank you for watching.